Also, I suppose, if you can't prove where they come from. Uh, if I'd have passed them on to somebody else, they would have been in exactly the same position. You know? um, I just couldn't make head or tail of this. You know? um, I personally could never kill a bird um, in that circumstances, you know, uh, even if I was breaking the law. Like Jack Dockra, John Quinn has now given up looking after injured birds. The RSPB makes no apology for any of its actions in any of the cases we've investigated. I think that we acted responsibly in each case. Of course, I wasn't always present um, at each of the investigations, so I never know what was actually said, but I've got total faith in the investigation staff and their professionalism. The RSPB spends £170,000 a year on its investigations department. Its chief executive believes it's money well spent and endorses the department's record. We're really very clear about what our priorities need to be so that we can use the resources that we've got as effectively as possible uh, and making sure that we really hit, hit issues that are important for bird conservation and protection in this country and abroad. So I, I think in, improving the way we manage the business can only have benefit in that respect. Some, though, are alarmed to hear the RSPB described as a business and believe it's become more interested in its own power than in the birds it's supposed to protect. It's a conglomerate. It's a vast organisation. You look at the balance sheet, there's millions of pounds involved. It seems to me that their policy has been to keep everyone else out, to use wildlife and countryside legislation wherever possible to keep everyone else out. They should realise that the RSPB started originally from a lot of well-meaning amateurs who were involved in conservation and now they seem to be steamrolling the modern-day well-meaning amateurs doing the same sort of work and I think it's very very sad. Even some of those sympathetic to the RSPB believe overzealous use of the laws protecting birds may discredit and undermine them. I think there have been cases where people have exercise their authority, that's what it amounts to, in a rather high-handed way. And this has been counterproductive in the effect it's had on public opinion. Here we have legislation that's there to protect wild birds in Britain. It's not there to protect individuals. The, the normal course of, um, of, of a person's right protects, protects themselves. I added it up fairly recently, it's nearly 9,000 um, bits of information that we've received over the last eight years, of which nearly 800 resulted in prosecutions, in which the RSPB took an active part, they may not have always taken the case, and there was over an 80% success rate. And we've never had anybody take us to court for any... Um, damages um, or any civil action. Few would dispute that the RSPB has played a crucial role in reducing persecution of wild birds. Equally, the present law was framed with the best of motives to offer wild birds maximum protection. One of its effects has been to give the RSPB, a charity, a great deal of influence in law enforcement. Critics of the law argue that where it requires those accused to prove their innocence, it's bound to lead to miscarriages of justice and that it invites bodies like the RSPB to take a more and more possessive attitude to nature. I honestly believe everybody has a right to nature. These birds are there for everybody to enjoy. Not just myself, everybody, my sons, the next generations. And I, want to, I want to make sure that these birds are still there. But if you don't go to, to these um, hill country where these birds are and where they nest, how can you see these birds? I know you've got to protect the hills, but surely you've got a right to be there to look at these birds. I mean, the way the RSPB operate, they don't want anybody in their mills at all except the RSPB warden.